Matt Lenehan for Boxing Social in association with Freebets.com, Empire Fight Store and Forge Irish Stout. We've been joined this morning by Gareth A. Davis. Gareth, how are we, my friend? Very well. Still buzzing from last night's uh, event. Did I see you there last night? I wasn't there last night. No, I was um, I was on the way back from Belfast. Um, the Conlon oh. Box had a show. Um, had the show in Ulster Hall, so it was Lewis there last night. The place where you saved my life. So... Hey. Well, you... never, never to be forgotten. We will tell the story one day, but not um, quite at the moment. But my well, lifesaver, as you've been since we were in Belfast I... together. Um, no, it was, it was an amazing event last night. Um, it will live long in the memory because of um, the atmosphere. It was only six fights. Every fight kind of delivered in its own way. And yeah. then we got a fight in which two heavyweights um, with so much at stake, both of them, um, absolutely delivered and literally left it all in the ring mm -hmm. um, to the point where, for me, in the last round, neither man had enough to finish the other. Yeah. Left to finish the other, you know? You know what? It was um, it was something like, I want to start with, I'll start with Fabio first because from early on in the fight, um, the, I think it was a, maybe an uppercut, I'm not sure, there was a, a, a punch which completely did away with his nose and, and everything else and you know, to show what he showed, you could tell struggling to breathe and he's coming through. He knocked Fraser Clark down. Fraser gets back up, then Fraser answers back. This fight had absolutely everything, didn't it? It had everything because they gave everything. Um, the... the um, the, the, the level of, uh, of commitment from both men to to the cause in this fight. It really was a war. Um, they both showed that they've got fantastic chins. Um, they both, um, they both literally gave it all. Fraser Clark's stock rose. Both men's stock rose last night. Yeah. Um, and because of the draw, because of the drawn verdict with the judges' cards, I mean, I had Fabio Wardley winning marginally anyway. Um, Same. That was, yeah, um, I, I didn't see... You know, 114, 113, I could see the draw, but I yeah. couldn't see, um, couldn't see um, the 115, 112 to Fraser. That's what I struggled with because he had the, the, the low blow deduction and the knockdown. knockdown. So, you know, and so, you know, to see him winning eight, four in rounds, I didn't quite see that, even though I thought he won the first four. I, I, I mean, I didn't have Fabio winning one of the first four, but you could have scored Fabio for one of those or maybe even two if you wanted to. They were close rounds. Fabio fought in flurries, um, in brilliant flurries at times. And we know this about Fabio when he's hurt. Yeah. He's so dangerous. He, he suddenly gets it from somewhere. Rem, rem, very reminiscent of Dillian White. Um you know, in, in some ways where he's just going to wade in and, and let his hands go. And he has to do that because, you know, he's young in the game in lots of ways um, because of his lack of, uh, of amateur experience and so on. But, um, yeah, it was, it was just, honestly, it was edge of your seat stuff. And the last four rounds, it felt like either of them, it was a seesawing kind of, they both had ascendancy in the in the contest. Yeah. It was so thrilling. It was unbelievable. I think just the pure sort of heart shown by both men, both suffered their adversities in the fight. And the fact it was a draw, I think that's one of them fights where everyone sits back and goes, a point either way or a draw, whatever, that's fine. And this is where, you know, neither man loses any value and they've both shot through the roof. So I suppose the next point would be is, we have to see this again, don't we? Yeah, we do, but maybe we don't need to see it immediately. Maybe not Let's, next. Yeah. No, not yeah. next, not next. We can, we know, you know, a different version of them when they fight next time might be good. You know, uh, the version that's maybe um, come on a little bit. Um, you know, it's, it, we know we're going to get a similar fight when these two fight again. They've both got great chins. They, they were both hurt during the contest. Um, they were both depleted. Resor their resources were depleted as the fight went on. As I say, that neither man had enough to finish the other at the end. 
extraordinarily. It's just one of those where you knew that the right big punch. There was one moment where, towards the end of the fight where they both threw everything and missed. It was like a Rocky movie. Um, and it was, you know, it was thrilling for what must have been 14, 14 odd thousand. There was a really good crowd. You could tell because it was gridlock when we left. It yeah. was one of those nights. Um, but um, yeah, I think they will fight again. Um, but but because Fabio said at the post-fight press conference that neither men gave interviews ringside. By the way, they they went straight for medicals. Uh, I think think they went. They they dang about for that. They both no both. no. But but Fabio wants to to potentially go beyond British right now. So um, yeah. and it is time for him to do that. So. Um, they, these two will meet down the line. It's very marketable. The fight, you know. Imagine, imagine thirty thousand at Portman Road or uh, Ip, Ipswich Town Football Club. That, that'd be amazing. Outdoor, balmy. But if they decide the money's right for them, um, then then maybe they will fight again next. But there's there's that you know look, we talk about it all the time. There's the heavyweight Super League mix in Saudi at the moment, which both men probably want to get involved in, even though their promoter might not want them there. Well, that was what I was going to come on to next. Obviously, this fight down the line. I think Joy Nelson said it. He says this: these type of fights, they take they take a little piece here because of the nature of them, and they may not fight next, but it will be down the line. But in between, Fraser Clark obviously had a lot of say question marks because everyone knows about his amateur pedigree and who he shared the ring with over the years, and he's travelled the world. But we were always waiting to see even just a glimpse of it in the pro game, and we got to see it last night. Um, and Fabio Wardley just went, you know, in terms of the jeopardy he had with the nose and the blood going everywhere, um, you know, everyone's, you know, raving about his performances. But where do they go next, if not each other? What would you like to see, for instance, what would you like to see Fraser do next? It's a very good question. Um, you know, when I think about the the bigger heavyweight mix, um, you know, the, the, the fights out there for him are people like... Um, um, you know, when you think of like a Frank Sanchez, that might be a difficult fight for him. Arslan Bek Makhmudov, that's that's a that's a great fight. Um, nice. oh, that's a very similar fight to Fraser Clark, isn't it? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah, it's a good call. I mean, that's a good shout. I mean, it is a very similar kind of fight. Again, Fabio's going to be involved in massive wars. He's got a real dog in him. Um, yeah. As I say, we both agree that their stock rose last night. So, yeah, some, a Joe Joyce fight would be amazing. But maybe over in Saudi, maybe he's earned that right to get back over there and get on one of those cards. Um, or, or, you know, without putting down his own promotional outfit, Boxer and Ben Shalom and Sky, maybe they get him a big fight next um, here. But the, the trouble is most of the heavyweights are taken up over there. But like you say, Joe Joyce... You know, Joe Joyce could be an option over here, you know? 100%. I was thinking last night, like, where do both men go? Obviously, Fabio's been doing the... the um, He's been to Saudi and, you know, he had that terrific performance against David Adelaide when... He, he's, like, he's doing things at the minute where... Because he's, like, the free agent. He's like, yep, yeah, I'll go there, beat him. I'll go there, do that. And he's just... He's going around and doing his thing at the minute. So he's in a good position. Fraser, obviously, with boxer, I was thinking, you know, who could, who could they pick, match him up with next that will satisfy after coming off such a high. I was just looking, thinking, Joe Joyce just come off uh, a victory against Cash Ali, wants to get back into the big time. That, yeah. could be, that could be the one that, you know, unlocks a door for both of them, couldn't it? You, you are promotionally on the money. You are promotionally on the money this morning. There's no question about that. Joe Joyce is a big shout. Right. I want to talk about, let's just go a quick review of the card in general, because I thought from top to bottom, I think it deserves a lot of praise because there was there was a genuine question mark over all the fights, even from before the bell. Babich and Steve Robinson was just everything you thought it would be. I thought that could have maybe got stopped a little bit um, a little bit earlier. Steve took a lot of punishment, but Chris Congo. I mean, years ago, I remember um, in the garden matchroom garden, he produced a stunning performance over um, Luther, Luther Clay at the time. And he um he turned up and took um Florian Marcos undefeated record. What impressed you about everything that went on? Because there was a lot of really good fights, I think, last night. There were. Um 
even the Ben Whitaker Leon Willings fight brought up something as well. Well, Robbo, Robbo and Babich fought very early in the night, just after five uh, um, p.m. I, they had to be out of there, I think, by ten thirty last night because of Sunday rules. Um, and um, that was at five o'clock, very early. Yeah, I think it could have been stopped even by Robbo's corner a couple of rounds earlier. Um, because he's so brave. I saw Robbo, uh, I, I saw Robert Steve Robinson after we had a chat. I've, I've always liked the guy. I love him. He's a great character. He's, he's a wonderful human being. And he's a, he's a giant as well. He is a giant. Babich has got bigger. Babich did Babich, did the savage. Um, but um, Robinson's attitude was Dragonian. Um, and he was a savage himself. But it was the, it was the right time to stop it. Even though he's protesting at the time, his eye was, was cut. Um, he'd taken a lot of punishment. Um, so that, that was a fun heavyweight fight to kick it off. I thought Vidal Riley boxed brilliantly against Mikel Lawal. Um, we had a few back and forths on the commentary about he should have been doing more, but he didn't need to. He did a great job. The boxers were the winners last night. Ditto Congo. And then, obviously, Isaac Chamberlain was ringside. I'd love to see that fight. Yeah, Chamberlain. I, do, I think, on that. Well, I was there right in the mix. I got pushed out of the way and um, I was about to try and do an interview. No, but it, it, it didn't get out of hand. Um, but it um, it nearly kicked off, it, it, but it didn't. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that was fascinating. But that, that whole cruiserweight uh, mix is fascinating at the moment. Well done, Vidal Riley. Showed his boxing skills as well. Nullifying Mikel Lawal. Same with Chris Congo, Matt. Um he, he he had a struggle, first of all. He was holding Marku um, in the beginning. It did him a favour that Howard Foster said no more holding because then he had to box him. And yeah. he fatigued and he frustrated um, Marku, who had great support there, by the way, as always, um, mm -hmm. to the point where um, Marku couldn't break through. He ran out of ideas. I was trying to walk him down. Congo was very, very good in the last few rounds. And he grew during the fight. How, how Marku's team thought um, he he was winning the fight um, I, is beyond me because I think Congo won it clearly. Yeah. Um, but and and then and then Leon Willings. I mean, you asked me to go through the card. I mean, Leon Willings really did show who he is. He physically very strong. Um, I you know, and, and he hit Whitaker a few times. Which and I and I mean this respectfully. You want to see Whitaker get hit. So it's 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 part yeah. of the dance, isn't it? It's part of the carnival. So um, so it, 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 he he really produced something good. He got through those eight rounds. Um, Callum you know, Simpson as well um, made another another statement, and he's he's him. The int it was interesting back and forth between him and Chelly because obviously Callum sells tickets. So he's saying, look, so Callum, Callum said something like, if you can sell more than ten tickets, I'll happily come to London. If not, we should do it where we we should do it up north, but. I know Chelly's the champion, but just talk to me a little bit about Callum Simpson. He's um he's on fire at the minute. Yeah, I spoke to him during the broadcast um for Talk Sports, and I also had him on the podcast at the end, um, the Fight Night podcast. And he he's a terrific human being. He's got lovely energy about him. And what he did last night, I think he's a he's a handsome devil. He's got all the qualities, he's got a beautiful wife or, or girlfriend. They're they're always together. He's got something special about him. And as we talk, talked about last night, um, Babe, was it Babe? Uh, was the opponent, yeah, from Tanzania. Um, he came with a reputation of being a big puncher and a dangerous fighter. And what Callum did in those first six minutes was say, no, I'm going to take you on. I'm just going to throw my hands with you. He wanted to make a statement last night on a card where a lot of people needed to make a statement. That was what was interesting about it. The matchups and the the virility of the card, if I can put it that way, was there in a very powerful form because every fight people needed to make a statement, um, and and he really did that um, against a guy. When you looked at the guy physically, he looked very powerful. Yeah, um, and he broke him up, he busted him up, and he put him down. Was it five rounds, four rounds, five rounds? Like that, five he rounds. really did make a statement, and he said, "I wanted to make a statement here tonight." He's a great prospect as well for for um, if he can get through Zach Chelly. I think Callum's still a young man. I think he's probably going to end up going up to light heavy as well. 
Um, yeah, I so think... him and Ben Whitaker down the line. It was it was a great performance. Like every fight had had a had its own little storyline last night. Hundred percent. Another sort of story that came from last night. Um, I was it was weird because I was with Harlem for the whole week up until yesterday, even until he we went to, we were at the airport together, and he never let anything slip about this. Uh, and then I saw obviously Barry McGuigan in the ring. I saw Chris Eubank Senior. I'm like, how has he not said anything about this to me all week? And then they both came in the ring. I understand this deal from what I gather isn't done. And it almost weird that Dalton Smith had left the ring not too long before all this had happened. Um, but what do you make of this potential potential fight? Oh, it's great. I mean, I spoke to Adam. In fact, I spoke to um, Harlem and, um, and Chris Eubank Sr., but they were very tight-lipped yeah. um, about it. I mean, it's close to being done, I understand. Um, it's a really good matchup in terms of styles because Harlem's a craftsman, not a power merchant i'm glad for now he's not stepping up to welterweight um because he's not the biggest welterweight in the world um you know he's 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 right at 140 um he was a brilliant last time out by the way showing it in brighton remember um it's great to have chris eubank senior involved it always is but yeah they they did a, they did well with that again those were little kind of um uh, undercurrent storylines, getting Zach Chelly and um, and um, Callum Simpson together, getting, it was, I know, Zach Chelly and, yeah, and Callum Simpson. Yeah, Callum, yeah. Um, getting Isaac Chamberlain ringside with with, with um, Vidal Riley, um, getting Harlem Eubank in the ring for a moment with, uh, with Adam Azim. It was all good stuff. It was all clever stuff. And uh, that it was really, really well thought out. I like the fight. Um, and, and it makes sense for Adam Azim. And I asked him if he'd had a word with Dalton. He said they just had a look at each other and had a smile during the night. Obviously, Dalton there with Florian Marku and his father, Grant, looking out for, for uh, Florian Marku's night last night. But uh, it was a great... You'd have loved it last night. It was one... Were you there when... when when I think Parker and White fought at the O2? Um, and, and Derek and... Um, and Derek Chisora and Dillian White had one fight at the O2 as well, I think. I am. Um, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't even. I don't think in this media circle at that point. I don't even think I was doing it. Oh, okay. Well, it, well, it was just what? reminiscent of those. Uh, it was just reminiscent of people coming to the O2. It's a great venue. The acoustics are fantastic. People have a great time there. As you know, the O2 with all its bars and restaurants and yeah. shops is a bit like a Vegas casino in some ways. So there's always, you know, jets and flotsam there as well. People out for the night. It was bank holiday Sunday, Easter Sunday, rather. Um, you know, resurrection day, obviously, for Christians, but um, resurrection day for, for, for Ben Shalom, Boxer, and, and that whole card, a lot of fighters on that card. 100%. Um, well, look, um, I appreciate you giving us some of your time this morning, Gareth. Um, sure. Good to cover the card. And I think it's fair to say it's going to be interesting to see what these two, especially in the main event, do next and um, how this Adam Azim, Hal Mewbank, Dalton Smith story rolls on. Um, but we'll we'll let um, sort of the future dictate and see what comes out. Um, appreciate you giving us some of your time and we will catch up again next week, buddy. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Gareth. Cheers, bud.